Good morning, my friends. How are you today? Well, it's Devo time with Donna. Every day is a new day with Donna May. And today, as we have been doing in our devotional time, we're going through Jesus Calling, which I have renamed to Jesus Answers. And today's devotional is kind of interesting, honestly. I think I'm going to... Uh, it's made me pause, it's made me think about some things, it's made me wonder, huh, what do I really think about making friends with your problems? Let's read on. Make friends with the problems in your life. Well, there is a scripture that talks about agreeing with your adversary. Hmm, hmm. Could our problems be our adversaries? Or, 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 or. Are they an avenue for strengthening us so that we can conquer, even though we know God has already conquered, so that we can see that we have conquered? That's what I'm thinking. So I don't think God makes a mess. I think that we make the mess. I don't think that God is wringing his hands over our mess. I think we wring our hands over our mess. And instead of taking action, we remain paralyzed and don't do anything until we either freak out or in some cases it's too late because of the consequences that come from our taking so much time. Or there's so many things swirling, 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 swirling as quote unquote problems that we don't know where to start. We don't know where to start. So what do you do with those kind of problems? Because I'm telling you, I'm sure you have some. I know I've got some. I know we can have a lot of things happening in our personal lives, in the lives of those we love, in our family's lives, in the lives of uh, church people, in the lives of people in the nation, in our cities, there's so many avenues for problems and so many avenues for worry. But worry is not our portion. So what do you do with our problems? Well, make friends with the problems in your life. Though many things feel random and wrong, remember I'm sovereign over everything. Yes, God is sovereign over everything. And yes, um, being the sovereign one, he's not worried. He's not upset. He's not having a cow over all the junk going on in our lives. It's usually us having the cow, right? Well, when it says, though many things feel random and wrong, remember I'm sovereign, he's not saying, hey, remember, I produced all these issues. I produced all these problems. And so, don't you do nothing because I got it. No, that's not what God's saying. He's saying, I'm sovereign. I'm God. I'm the king. And you're going to be okay because I'm going to walk with you through it. And I'm going to help you through it so you can move onward in your lives. But if you choose to sit there and do nothing, if you choose to sit there, I'm still sovereign. I still love you. I'm still in charge. I'm not going to love you less. See, God's love is not impacted by what we do or what we don't do. God's love is constant. God's love is consistent. God's love is always, regardless of our mess. He is the consistent one with how he feels. His emotions don't change toward us. I like that. That's good news. He says, I can fit everything into a pattern for good, but only to the extent that you trust me. Well, what does that mean, really? What does it mean to have all these problems and to trust God only to the extent that you trust me? Well, could it mean that God wants to give you an answer, wants to give you a solution to one or all of your problems? He wants to give you an actual avenue to go through it. There's a scripture that talks about they're not coming anything to you, not coming anything to me, that there's not some kind of escape route for, right? It's not some kind of escape route. So he'll either give us a strategy and a solution for escape an escape route, 
or he'll give us a strategy and solution on how to walk through it so that we conquer it so that it strengthens us instead of it overwhelming us and it causing us to be put underneath the truck we get to choose and if we can hear trust what we hear and walk it out with him we can show ourselves and the world that we are overcomers and that we are conquerors through the God who lives inside of us remember Father Son and Holy Spirit all three live inside that right there that's some huge advisors wouldn't you say those are huge advisors living in you maybe we need to stop and listen to that advice instead of listen to all the swirling and all the emotional duress and all the jumpiness and all the crazy feelings sometimes we just got to stop and listen to the voice the voice in our head which is from God that voice the voice the voice you know you've heard of the program the voice well he is really the voice <laughs> he is the voice every problem can teach you something transforming you little by little into the masterpiece I created you to be well, I've been telling y'all you're a masterpiece God sees you as a masterpiece he sees you as a masterpiece already so he wants you to see yourself as a masterpiece he wants me to see myself as a masterpiece he wants us to see ourselves as those who have overcome and those who have conquered so that we are unafraid to conquer and unafraid to be consistent and unafraid to move forward if we will see ourselves as people willing and able to move forward we will move forward we will be consistent we will be conquerors we will not be overwhelmed and overcome if we can see ourselves as the ones who are not overwhelmed and not overcome that's how if we'll trust him that's how it works that's how we'll walk through the problems that's how he's sovereign he's sovereign by us responding in righteousness and strength with him to move through from a mess into a masterpiece the very same problem can become a stumbling block over which you fall if you react with distrust and defiance isn't that the truth if you act silly if you act stupid if you do something that's totally unrighteous and just unkind and unwise and that causes a strong defiance and it's out of a place of distrust it does not usually go well with either one of us does it that's not the voice of God that's not the voice of the strong one that's not the voice of the obedient one that's not the voice of our father when we react and you know what we do react so we we get to stop we get to train ourselves not to react we get to train ourselves to respond to to stop and take a breath and take that person who rejected us or we think they rejected us take that person who rejected us and forgive them take that person who seemingly doesn't want to spend time with us and say wait wait they just got stuff going on it's not personal it's not about me and even in cases where there are is severe rejection listen I know from personal experience that it was not about me it was not because it was something going on with me it was really because that person was being pursued by the enemy and the enemy wanted to destroy them and if he if the enemy could destroy them through that kind of meanness and then that person turned that meanness on me and I'd be destroyed too then the enemy wins then the enemy wins the enemy wins but if we can stop and we can respond instead of react so you react out of distrust you react out of emotions you react out of a defiance but you respond out of trust you respond out of obedience you respond out of love knowing he loves you even if you don't feel loved 
and knowing that you're on the way to loving yourself because the one who loves you lives inside you because you are worthy of love. You are worthy of love. Do not let those other voices and those other thoughts and those other ideas slap you around any longer telling you you're not worthy of love because that's just a bald faced lie. That's why those voices say that just so you will be convinced that that's what you are, that you're unloved, but it's not true. It wouldn't talk all the time if it were true. God's truth is simple. So today I was listening to scripture early this morning and I was listening to how Jesus um, was walking outside and there was a man up in a tree and he said he saw him. He said he saw him before, before he was ever up in the tree. He saw him. He saw him and the Lord's just gentle voice inside me was like, Donna, I see you. I see you. See, when you feel like you're not seen, God sees you. When you feel like your family doesn't care, God sees you. When you feel like you're all alone and you don't know what you're going to do, God sees you. God sees you. You're not alone and you can know what to do. Because the one who lives inside of you can give you strategy and instruction and solutions while you're on the way to where you're going. The choice is up to you and you will have to choose many times each day whether to trust me or obey me. Isn't that the truth? When we have things thrown at us left and right, you got to stop and decide. Am I going to trust God or not? Let me tell you what distrust looks like. So I'm going to the Apple store today because my computer's messed up. I, I don't know. There used to be a time when no virus could hit a, a Mac, but now I seem to got something going on that's not cool. So I'm going. Now what if they say they can't help me? Now I don't think they're going to do that because they're the Mac people and they're supposed to know how to do this. But let's say they say they can't help me. Or they say I need to keep your computer for two weeks. I'm going to have to decide now, am I going to be unrighteous about that? Say, Hell no, you need to get your act together and get my stuff together. No, I, I need to know ahead of time <laughs> that all will be okay. Why? Because the sovereign one lives inside of me. How am I going to react? How am I going to respond to the forces and the thoughts and the ideas and the voices around me as well as inside me? I do get to choose. I do get to decide. And I can decide ahead of time. You can decide ahead of time. You can decide ahead of time how you're going to respond to specific situations. And you can respond ahead of time by deciding deep inside, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to just be angry about those kind of things. I'm going to stop and remember it's not personal. If you can do that, if you can do that, that will really help you in your journey. That will help you in your relationships. It'll help you if somebody is not being nice to you, if you can keep in mind that it's not about you so you don't get so offended and so upset and so angry and so hurt that you end up just being volatile right back to them. And then you've got this thing going on and then everything gets ugly. The atmosphere gets ugly. The emotions get ugly and the relationship gets ended because one person wasn't thinking, with the righteousness of Christ. It's one thing when, when, if both of you can, that's cool. But if at least one of you can, when the other one's losing their lid, that at least will stop things and bring things to a halt with regards to you being controlled. The word says, let a soft answer turn away wrath. A soft answer turn away wrath. That is one way where you are able to stop the thoughts and ideas and the voices that come after you on the inside of you and after you on the outside of you to try to control you. The best way to befriend your problems is to thank me for them. Well, that's interesting. It makes me think about Corey Ten Boom, who was in prison and she had all these fleas hopping around and apparently there were so many of them they were thick and she began to thank god for the fleas and her sister was with her in the prison she was thanking god for the fleas her sister thought she was crazy but you know what happened 
when the military came to take them away and to go ahead and annihilate them, there were so many fleas, they backed away and they did not come in there and get them. They did not want to be anywhere near them. That Thanksgiving, that Thanksgiving kept Corrie Ten Boom from worry. It kept her from agitation. It kept her from fear. And it allowed her to comfort her sister who did not understand why she could ever thank God for fleas. But after that, it was a living witness to her sister to thank God through everything, to thank God no matter what. This simple act opens your mind to the possibility of benefits flowing from your difficulties. A benefit flowing through your difficulties. Gosh, what, what can that look like? Benefits that flow through our difficulties. I tell you what, I've had some difficulties. I've had some strong difficulties uh, working out some things, trying to figure out some things. And it has really given me opportunity. Uh, one of the things, the one of the benefits that it has given me is it's really driven me even to a, another place with God to hear him, to listen to him, to get instruction from him, to know what he's saying through these difficulties, because sometimes they can cause you to stumble. They can cause you to falter. They can cause you to want to fall down and say, that's it, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. But you can respond differently. You can stop and go, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm going to be determined in the difficulty instead of overcome. And the benefit is that God can point you into a different direction on the inside of you so that it doesn't control you, but instead you're controlling your own environment. You're controlling your own attitude. And that itself, that alone will impact your environment. That will impact the people around you. When everybody else is going crazy and you've decided to stand to be thankful, it will cause people to wonder what is wrong with you. It'll cause people to wonder why you're at peace. And you'll get to tell them about the one who lives inside of you that gives you the P-E-A-C-E -E you're in instead of the P-I-E-C-E-S that they are in. That is one of the benefits. You can even give persistent problems nicknames, helping you to approach them with familiarity rather than with dread. Well, you know, that's, a, that's different. I have to think, think on that for a minute. Give your difficulties a nickname. So let's say, um, Yeah, I don't know if I'm in agreement with that. I don't know if I want to give um, my problems nicknames, honestly, because I want to work through my problems quickly. I want to hear God so I can face them and I can move through them and not be overwhelmed and overcome. So I guess you could cause one of your problems overwhelmed. Well, there's overwhelmed again. There's depression again. There's distraught trying to hit me down again. As long as you don't talk to it in such a way that you want to remain friends. We don't want to remain friends with things that want to destroy us. Now, not every problem wants to destroy you at all. Problems are for us to find solutions. Problems are for us to find strategies. Problems are for, over, for us to be overcomers and conquerors in. So if you have a relationship problem, it causes you to really be concerned about another person or maybe you've been separated from something and you, you want to be friends with somebody and you can't be, then that's your opportunity to turn to the Lord and let God be your friend. Let God be your filler. Let God fill that place and let God change that other person's heart. So that difficulty can turn into your way of connecting with God in a different way and in a stronger way than you have before. And watch him walk out that problem with you so that instead of being lonely, you're filled up. Instead of feeling like you don't have any friends, God becomes your friend. There are all sorts of ways that we can find benefits as we face our problems and as we move forward for our problems. 
The next step is to introduce your problems to me, says the Lord, enabling me to embrace them in my loving presence. Well, I'm all for that. I'm all for taking your problems and say, here it is, God. Here's my issue. Here's my issue. I'm giving you my issue. I'm giving you this relationship. I'm giving you this money problem. I'm giving you this sickness. I'm giving you the ideas. I'm giving you this limitation. I'm giving you this lamp. I'm giving you this lag. I'm giving all this to you, Lord. I put it all in your hands, and I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to see me through, to see me through. I will not necessarily remove your problems, but my wisdom is sufficient to bring good out of every one of them. He doesn't always remove our problems. And sometimes I'm like, really, God? Again, again, again. Sometimes I walk away from that problem and I just don't visit it and I let it remain a problem. So then it's not my fault that it doesn't go away. Sometimes I avoid it. So it's not my fault it doesn't get handled. If I will bring it to him and let him work it out with me on what to do next, he has the solution and he has answers to see us through and bring out the good out of our problem. Bring the good out of our problem. So we see ourselves differently. So that we see God differently. And we even see the problem differently. When we get on the other side of the problem. And we see it. And we look at it. And we stand on top of it. Instead of it being on top of us. You know. You know. You can stand and go, God did this with me. God did this with me. God did this through me. And you can say, I'm a conqueror. And listen, if you've got things you just have not been able to get on top of, it, top of, that's okay. Tomorrow's another day. Today's another day. Take one little thing. If the big things overwhelm you, take a little thing. Take a little thing. Take a little thing. Don't take such a big thing that it's just going to totally put you underneath and you think you're never going to be able to get up again. Take a little thing and then take another little thing. Then take another, until you've got all these little things done that were one great big thing. Take one thing of a big thing. Take one bite out of the elephant until that elephant is eaten up and out of your house. I bless you today. Um, the scriptures today is Romans 8.28. We are sure to know that God being a partner in their labor and he's a partner with us in our labor. All things work together and are fitting into a plan for good for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Well, you are definitely called according to his design and purpose. And your life is working out for good. 1 Corinthians 1, 23-24. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Listen, when you conquer even that one little thing, people take note. People see you've conquered. People see when you've been with God. People see that you're loving. And why is this important? Because some of those people don't have any kind of belief in God whatsoever. And some people are thinking they're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. But you're on the inside like, yeah, I'm going to make it because God lives inside of, me, inside of me. How can I not make it? How can you not make it when Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three live inside of you? How can you not make it? That is my challenge for you today. How can you not make it when Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three, live in you? I bless you today. Until soon, I'll see you tomorrow at 9. Bye-bye. Love you. Tag a friend here in the group.